Well, hello there, YouTube. My name is Tony, and this is Tony Live TV. And in this video, I'm just picking up right where I left off in the last video. And that is to answer the question of what is my RPM? Why don't I just step back for a minute and talk about how all this started. In order to tune your vehicle, you have to make sure that every sensor and control and everything is talking correctly amongst each other and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing to adjust air, fuel mixture, timing. You know, this is your EZL, your ECU, and they're communicating with certain sensors. So once all these controls and sensors and everything are working together, that's when you can set duty cycle or your air fuel mixture screw, and you also have to have the right RPM. If you have high idle, the most likely culprit is a vacuum leak. So check that first, moving on. After that smoke test, I still have a high idle. So I tested the throttle position switch. Uh-oh, that's where I found the problem. That's where the communication with the ECU uh, is solved, the EZL and everything. Trust me, because in that video, if you notice that once I fixed that wiring issue and I fired up the engine, First thing I said in that video was, oh, I can already tell. Oh my goodness. Oh, psh. I can already tell my RPM's already better. However, I was also monitoring RPM. You can do this from the diagnostics port, pin number one and pin number two. And I was reading 80 hertz and 80 hertz is about 1200 rpm it still didn't matter to me i thought okay in the next video because we're getting pretty close to, to getting through all of the ke jetronic sensors and controls right so i thought okay it's going to be like the oxygen sensor is telling it something that is throwing the ECU off or whatever. That's what I thought possibly that could be it. So then I went ahead and I did a test and in that video, the last video, that thing tested out just fine. But I replaced it anyways, I kept the old one. What really threw me off is the one test that Mercedes manual tells you to do, and so does everybody else, is to to find out if your idle speed control valve is functioning properly is that you unplug it and then your RPM will go up. But when I unplugged it, my RPM didn't go up. You know what's supposed to happen when you take that off, right? I'm not doing it now. That's not increasing. Could my EZL be at fault? So how would you know? I'm going to verify that, and the way that I'm going to verify my RPM, we're going to see what we get on the coil side, what's our hertz there, as well as on pin number one and pin number two on our diagnostics port. But instead of just using a multimeter, I decided I wanted to use my oscilloscope. It has two probes. This way here, I can monitor the spark on the coil side, as well as the spark coming out of the EZL. So this way here, I can see what's coming in and do they line up? That's gonna answer the question as far as RPM goes. Now this might not be a complete end of the series. I don't really know if there's more tests you guys want me to do, but we're gonna solve this right now. We're gonna get our RPM where it belongs. We're gonna go through each of the little things now and do the quick tests. All these items that I just talked about, we're wrapping it up right here. I'm going to test each one of them and maybe everything will come together in this video. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. I didn't test the, the coolant sensor yet. That's the last thing really in this, in this whole sensor group is that there's a coolant sensor that sits right there on the intake manifold. There's two pins. One pin goes to the EZL and the other pin goes to the ECU. I tested the circuit between those all the way to that coolant sensor and the same thing with the ECL, ECU's line. So there's no problem with the electrical wiring on this one. 
and it's got a brand new sensor, and I also tested that sensor. So that's been eliminated. Now let's go find out what the real problem is. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is some base readings. I wanna get some voltage readings of the ISCV and the EHA. Okay, the idle speed control valve, ignition off. Ignition on. Seven, three, five, three, six. Okay, the EHA, ignition off. Ignition on. 1.418 plus, right? If you're reading negative, switch your probes. Those last two tests were testing voltage. Now I want to test the amperage draw on the EHA. So I have a different configuration. I'll have a little diagram here how I wired this or hooked it up to my multimeter and set it to milliamps. Ignition is currently off. Ignition on. We've got 74.9. Now if you're reading negative, again, switch your leads. You want this to read positive. This next test is not in the manual. It's only for when the engine is idling, but I want to see what the ignition on is in milliamps on the idle speed control valve. So here it is. Here is on. 188.4.5 milliamps, and that's positive. Remember that. Make sure that that's positive, otherwise switch your leads. Okay, I've connected the EHA to see where it sits. So if I'm reading the manual correctly, we should be zero and plus or minus three milliamp. Now let's touch pin number one. And that's saying, like before, you know, let's say average, you know, 85, whatever. And isn't that interesting? Well, now let's look at the oscilloscope. So you can see I'm sitting right around 50 hertz, a little less between 45 and 50, which is absolutely perfect. But my multimeter reads 100. Right? Twice that. Just like I said in my video, my ear hears half of what my multimeter is reading. We can measure it with the oscilloscope, and each one of those divisions is 20 milliseconds. You can take that figure and times it by 15 or you can actually measure it right there on the scope between those divisions. That's 20 milliseconds per division, and we have roughly one pulse per 20 milliseconds. And you can see on the coil side, it kind of jumps up and down, and that's because of how the coil works, secondary ignition. Let's go ahead and rev it up a little bit. running absolutely beautiful. So now I've answered the question on what is my RPM? And it looks like my RPM's ranging between 700 and 750, which is right in the target area. It could be a little bit lower. This whole multimeter deal, you know, if you're reading 100 and you're hearing 50, you know what the problem is. You, and if you have that, you, you don't need to go buy an oscilloscope. You can actually take that 100 figure you're getting, divide it by 50, and that's where your duty cycle is most likely. You know, the oscilloscope is a nice visual tool, and it's really easy to go ahead and take a capture. It has that feature, 
and you can go in there and measure precisely what it is at any given point. But now you guys are probably saying, Tony, there's one test you forgot to do. Now I didn't really forget that test, and the test that you're referring to is when I tested milliamps on the ISCV, the idle speed control valve. You notice I got like, I think 188.4 milliamps, I think when I tested that just with the ignition to on position. But I'm gonna put a little clip right here that shows what why I'm not gonna perform that test. And the reason is, is if you look at my multimeter there, it says OL. Well, that's overload. I didn't realize it, but my multimeter, if you're gonna measure anything over 600 milliamps, you have to use the other plug, right? For 10 amps. So I overloaded it and I actually blew the fuse on my multimeter as far as milliamps go. So then I switched it over to the 10 amp side of the plug and guess what? I blew it. Either I blew it or it was already blown. This I'm not too sure about. And I don't want to take chances with my oscilloscope right now because I don't, you know, internally I don't want to blow anything up. Somewhere, I'm going to look for it, but I have an old school, you know, sweeping kind of a gauge for amperage. And then I'm going to have to test it a little bit differently. But what I think is actually happening, guys, is everything's working. Okay, you remember that when I pulled the plug, my idle did not really change. And that's because everything is working so well together that my idle is fine, even without the help of the ISCV. However, the ISCV is actually functioning, it's working. I know that for a fact, I put my finger on it, you can feel it, everything's working, but the circuit is drawing a very high amperage. The most likely cause for that is the idle speed control unit, right? The one that we've already bench tested. Bench testing is different than real life testing. So in this real world environment, it's drawing 10 amps, not the idle speed control valve. I bench tested that and I even tried it again just to be sure, and it only draws one amp. That part is actually functioning properly, but the the actual idle speed control unit is drawing much more than that. And the likely cause of that is going to be solder joints, you know, a resistor, something inside of that actual speed controller. So what I did do off camera is I grabbed the other one that I had in the box that I told you guys I didn't know where I got it. It was, it's old. It's not, it's not original to the vehicle. It's a different one. And I put that in and it worked the exact same way, but I already, you know, as far as functionality goes, but I did not have a amp meter to test it. So I thought I'm just going to go ahead and end it right here. It's been long enough. Maybe there's more to come, but what really should happen is that when the engine is idling, you should get an amp draw of between 700 milliamps and one amp. That's what the manual tells you. Are you guys with me on that? Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, everything's working, right? With the idles down, everything's ready to go. We're almost ready to actually start to fiddle around with duty cycle, but I'm not gonna do that until I solve this issue with that bolt or amperage draw. Here's another thing for you. Every once in a while, after I turn on the ignition and I start the vehicle and I turn it off, all of a sudden my antenna will just go up, right? Key out and everything, and the antenna goes up and the radio is all garbled, right? It looks like it's on, but it's all garbled. You can't turn it on or off. You can't, you can't do anything. The key's out, right? I'm trying to do everything and nothing's working. I, to reset it, and this has happened a few times now. I knew that I had something. I thought it was just going to be some kind of relay. Well, it might be this relay. For me to reset it, all I have to do is, is take, I should continue with this in a future video, but um, all I have to do is just remove the cable from the battery and then put the thing back on. Everything goes back to normal. But I'm hoping that there is a direct short in the ICU and 
when I do turn it off, the relay is not closing because of all the bad solder joints. Maybe everything's working exactly how it's supposed to work except for this one little part. So remember, all you have to do is measure that. If you're reading between 700 and one amp, then you're good to go. All the elements now you've tested, right? If you go to this the beginning of this playlist, everything we've touched on right now, right, has been tested. So you can do duty cycle. Otherwise, wait for me. Ha, <laughs> ha,